and sisters in Yahushua Mashiach. I'm just here to show you something. Um, you know the bright morning star? It's, it was at its brightest uh, January of this year. Since then, it's, it's no longer even, I just came out from outside and I, and I was using the Stellarium like app on my phone which was very accurate everything was calibrated perfectly and it was five something in the morning and I looked outside to see where Venus is because Venus is the bright morning star and Venus is not a star it's a planet and it was um, it was below the equator line I couldn't see it at all and I live in South Florida imagine that so um, bright morning star is February now this is interesting harvest moon to mark end of summer stargazing one of the most popular full moons of the entire year will kick off the second to last weekend of, astron of astronomical summer and will be the centerpiece of a must see celestial alignment Summer's final full moon will sport one of the most popular lunar nicknames of the entire year. And in addition to the centuries-old name, the moon will serve as the centerpiece of a can't-miss alignment after the sun has set. Sky watchers will step outside on Friday night. And this is dated uh, September 7th, 2022. And we are, what, Thursday, September 8th? So yeah, tomorrow, hmm, yeah. The moon will serve as the centerpiece of a can't miss alignment after, after the sun has set. Sky watchers who step outside on Friday night or early Saturday morning will be able to enjoy the sights of the harvest moon, one of the most popular full moons of the year that has a direct relation to the changing of the seasons, guys. How come we didn't, everybody's focused on the bright morning star, which you can't even see in the morning. It's not there. Unlike some full moons that have viral nicknames, the origins of this particular name have roots that trace back to early America. Wow, look how beautiful. Oh. That's a moon. As the summer fades to early fall, Farmers all across North America prepare to harvest their crops before the arrival of frosty autumn nights. The, f the full moon that occurs closest to the September equinox often aligns with the, with the harvest, giving birth to the moniker Harvest Moon. Before electricity, the moonlight from the Harvest Moon would allow farmers to continue working in the fields past sunset. The drop in, touch, the drop in temperature during the evening would also make it more comfortable for farmers working late, especially if it was a year with a particularly warm fall like what is predicted across most of the United States this year. Since the full moon closest to the equinox can occur at any time from early September to early October, the harvest moon is sometimes the final full moon of astronomical summer and other times the first moon, the first full moon of fall. September's full moon also has other nicknames inspired by farmers and the seasonal changes that take place in the early autumn, including the corn moon and the cor corn moon. Wow. Rutting moon, yellow leaf moon, and autumn moon. Despite the variety of nicknames, Friday night's harvest moon, which is tomorrow night, will look nearly identical to other full moons throughout the year. However, this year's harvest moon will be the centerpiece of a unique, of a very unique astronomical alignment. Jupiter and, Jupiter and Saturn will be rising with the full moon on Friday evening, with the trio appearing in a row splayed across the southeastern sky by 10 p.m. local time. Jupiter is the brightest, is the brighter of the two planets and will appear to the left of the moon while Saturn is slightly dimmer and will shine to the right of the moon. No telescope is required to see the planets as they are bright enough to be seen with the naked eye. Kitty, stop! Stop! Yeah, 
I gave him a cat some some catnip and he's going crazy. Um, <laughs> no telescope is required to see the planets as they are bright enough to be seen with the naked eye. Even from the heart of a city like Los Angeles, Chicago, or Philadelphia, where there's ample light pollution. And here's a little thing, a picture here. Um, full moon alights with Jupiter, Saturn. Looking southeast around 10 p.m. local time, September 9th, tomorrow, into Saturday morning. So here's your compass down here, the lower left-hand corner. East, all right, Jupiter, this brightest the moon, Saturn is up here, the south, southeast, it's the southeast region. Um, the rings of Saturn cannot be seen without a telescope, we know that. You know, tonight I was actually able to see Mars, <laughs> That's, I've never seen Mars before in the sky. That's pretty cool. It's like way up. You have to put your, you have to like, you have to direct your head straight up, you know? Anyways, the Celestial Show will continue throughout the weekend. I repeat, the Celestial Show will continue throughout the weekend with the moon shifting towards Jupiter, appearing just below the planet on Saturday night and Sunday night. The pairing will be a great opportunity for, for photographers or people with a telescope who want to see a close-up of the duo. Jupiter and Saturn will remain prominent features in the evening sky throughout the rest of autumn, serving as easy-to-find planets or stargazers of all ages. It's so cool. But remember, there's no full moon. It's just going to be this this weekend, tomorrow. That is really, really cool. I didn't know about that until I started researching that tonight. Because, wow, that is really awesome. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Well, there you go. Harvest Moon. I, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord. So anyways, I just wanted to show you that. And um, I just want to give you some information about the bright morning stars so you understand. Um, It was a song. I don't know about that. It's the harvest star. I 
I mean, the harvest moon. It's funny. You see this right out here? At the birth of his son, John the Baptist. Zechariah, Zechariah's son. That's not, that's not Zechariah. It's Zechariah with an A. That's his father's name. Zechariah is a prophet that has his own book in the Bible. People get them confused. show you um I'm gonna show you real quick can you see can you see Venus um can you see Venus in the morning Venus doesn't make any visible light of its own. It shines by reflecting sunlight. Right now, Venus is well up in the morning sky. Oh, this is old. That's 2014. Here, February 1st, 2022. Venus is currently a morning object. So you can find it before sunup and watch it with the eye until after the sun rises. Day star. See, it says it right here when it comes. Um, here's a little picture of Venus. If you follow, follow Venus beginning 30 minutes before sunrise until 30 minutes after sunrise but again that's in february guys it's not now because i just went out and saw it and i couldn't see it Let's see, let's just do a search for um, um, can you see Venus in what is it, August? Or did you say March? That's September. Can you see him? Sorry about that, guys. Can you see? Oh, can you see? Venus can you see Venus in September 2022 
Okay, Venus will appear to, near the star Regulus in the Leo constellation between September 4th and 6th. On or around Labor Day, Monday, September 5th, sky watchers on Earth will have the opportunity to see Venus move next to the bright star Regulus. See, the most, the most brilliant planet of all in September, Venus, lies very low to the east-northeast horizon before sunrise. This is probably your last month to get a view of it before it makes the transition during October from the morning to the evening sky. You see? It's, you can't see it. What planets will be visible um, in September 2022? September mornings, Venus near the horizon. What months can Venus be seen? During late January into most of February, Venus will resemble a striking crescent phase in telescopes and steadily held by binoculars in the morning sky. Venus and Jupiter will, ap will appear dramatically close to each other on the mornings of April 30th and May 1st. So you can see it, but it's 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 very very close to the horizon, and it's not as bright, obviously. See that Venus. The brightest planet can still be seen near the near near the sunrise in early September, but after a week or so, will disappear into the sun, into the sunrise. So that's it. This is this is really it. So it's the harvest moon, guys. The harvest moon. The harvest moon. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's gonna be incredible. Wow. The reason why it's called the harvest moon is because the harvest moon earned its name because of the moonlight that occurs early in the evenings, leaving farmers with more time to harvest their summer-grown crops. This is so cool. This is the closest full moon to the autumn equinox. Wow. Anyways, so I just want to let you guys know that. And let me just go ahead and show you. Um, can I do this? No, I don't even know if I can do this. Let me see. No, it just stops. I can't step. Can't do no, that's not good. I thought maybe I could do that. Well, whatever. Hmm. Anyhow. That's really, really, really interesting. Again, I didn't know about this until I started looking for, um, the uh, bright morning star, which you can't see, um, you can't see it because it's just too low. And in February is was the ideal time, and you can still see it, but it's not 
it's not it's it's not prominent or anything like that so we got the harvest moon going and this is the last this is the last week to see the bright morning star that's it you can't see it anymore after this after this first week of september if the harvest moon comes out it's very interesting very 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 interesting hmm So let me show you let me show you what time the sunset is here. Sunset um uh, sunset uh sunset Pompano Beach all right seven thirty I'm sorry, sunrise. Sunrise, Pompano Beach. 7 or 3 a.m. So soon, okay? And this is the app that I used. Um, clear stars. Um, I used this. It has 50 million downloads. It was It was the most popular one. So that's why that's why I used it. And uh let me just show you. Alright. Uh, right, let me All right, let me calibrate it. Make sure, make sure it is calibrated. Your phone is not calibrated. That's what I thought. All right, you know how to calibrate a phone? Pretend it's a glow stick at a club. That's what someone taught me. It's true. So you just go like this. I know you can't see me, but you just go up and down like that. That's the easiest way. Okay, watch. You'll see. All right, calibrate. Still, forward and back. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And now move it side. Move it. Tilt your phone. Okay. I'm sorry. Tilt your phone forward and back. Mm -hmm. Move it side to side. Move it side to side and then tilt left and right. It shouldn't be that difficult because it was actually a much easier way. <laughs> but, anyways, it's still uncalibrated. Uh, 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 uh. I know how to calibrate it then. It could be because the battery is low, but I just go to maps and then I, I go like this, I go back and forth. I, go, I go like this. Okay, now I should be good. Okay, so let's go back into that app where it should be. Um, where is it? Oh, I don't know where it is. Sky map. There it is. Okay. All right. So let's see. Calibrate. It's still on calibrate. That's not. That's not true. You know why? Because I'm not. I'm not inside. Ugh. Let me go outside to show you guys, so you understand. 
so you understand for yourself. Calibrating it out here. All right, now let's see. Now let's see if it's calibrated. Probably because the battery's low. It has to be that. Let me turn off the internet real quick. Okay. Let me try again. Calibrate it. So let's go back to sky map. Okay, there we go. Compass accuracy high. All right, perfect. Compass accuracy high. Then why is it saying this my internal compass is not calibrated? I don't know. It's a Google phone, so it's a Google thing. <laughs> All right, so we come out here. Can show you where it is, but if we look, and I wish you could see outside. Anyways, you know that the sun is rising, right? All right, I'm pointing right now where the sun is gonna rise, and you can see Venus is right there. See Venus right here? Um, you can, there's Venus right there. All right. See the sun? Well, you can't see it. That's the thing. I wish you could see it. Well, wait a minute. I think we can superimpose it. I think. I'm not sure. What is this button up here, Gil? Sky viewing to what? Manual mode. Oh, oh, manual mode. That. Okay, let me see. I don't know what that does either. This way last time. What is this here over here? Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's really cool. That's so. That's so you, it doesn't bother you when you're trying to look at the stars at night. It's like wearing night vision goggles. That's pretty neat. So, anyways, all right. So now you know about um, the bright morning star, which is actually Venus, the planet, and the harvest moon, which, which is. I mean, my heart went pitter patter because that sounds exciting, very exciting. Just think about it. Hmm. All right.